Hey guys, we are here today in Valheim, and we are going to take a look at some of the hidden weapon stats in the game, and we are also going to rank the weapon types in some of these categories. The things that we will be covering in this video will be critical hit chance, stagger duration, stagger chance, durability loss, attack speed, overall DPS, attack range, and knockback distance. And to start out, I'm going to cover two of those for you very quickly being critical hit chance and stagger duration. First off, I have staggered a great many creatures through the game and have time to stagger duration across weapons, and stagger duration is identical no matter what weapon you use. Clocking in at about 1.2 seconds, maybe a little bit less. And through hundreds of enemy kills and thousands of hits, I have come to the determination that I am either the unluckiest viking in the world or critical hit chance does not exist. This is not to say that critical hits don't exist in the game. Every time you hit a staggered enemy who is currently in the stagger animation, you gain a critical hit, denoted by a noticeable sound, which I did cover in my original weapon stats video. However, in that video I did claim that every weapon can land critical hits, but after going back and watching the part where I cover critical hits again, I noticed that even in my original video, when I show the critical hit, it is just after I stagger the mob on the second hit which makes it more important than ever to land parries and stagger creatures so you can land higher damage critical hits. Which will lead us directly into stagger chance. I have tested this across the various weapon types with countless hits and countless enemy kills. I have killed enough enemies testing stagger chance to see four grey dwarf nests dissipate naturally as opposed to being destroyed by damage because apparently they have a spawn limit on them. And although I was able to compile some data on stagger chance, none of it is too consistent. And this is because there are simply too many variables to get an exact number on. Obviously the different weapon types would carry a different stagger chance, and the different quality level of your weapon would also affect this. However, it also seems like weapon skill affects your chance to stagger enemies on any given hit, which means I can't actually get you an accurate number until I am level 100 in each weapon type, which is proving difficult since you lose skill every time you die. If I do ever get to this point, I will do these tests again and try and get you an accurate number. All I can leave you with is that the piercing weapons that I tested, being the knife and the spear, were in the bottom bracket of stagger chance, landing somewhere in the 40% area. Slashing weapons with the axe and the sword landed somewhere in the 50% ranking second. And clubs and hammers, like the mace, landed up near 80% and were the top end of it. And this followed the same trend with two-handed weapons, having the polearm be the bottom, battle axe be the next up, and the stag breaker knocking back and staggering on nearly every hit. And now we got the stats that did not go the way I thought they would, like critical hit chance and stagger chance out of the way, we will move into the other categories where we will be ranking the weapons, starting with durability loss. Now durability loss is fairly simple, and as you would probably assume, it is on a 1 to 1 ratio. Every hit landed with your weapon, your harvesting tool, or your building hammer makes the item lose 1 durability, whether or not it's on a creature, an ore or wood that the item can actually harvest, or against something that it cannot harvest you will lose one durability for every landed hit, regardless of the effect of that hit. You will not lose durability, however, when you hit air, so misses don't bother you much at all. Excluding the bow. The bow will lose one durability every time you shoot an arrow off of it, regardless if it hits a target or not. Now, although this might seem minor, durability loss is a huge factor in the game. You can see here a rank of the weapons, 1 through 7 on types, based upon iron weapons, and they're equal with the Ancient Bark Spear and the Abyssal Razor. And next up you will see right here every iron weapon and the ancient bark spear along with the abyssal razor being shown with their maximum damage output on a three hit combo. Now with any of your weapons and as you've seen in my original weapon stats video, there will be yellow brackets denoting what your weapon skill and damage output is with any given weapon. But the number displayed here is the maximum damage of that weapon that you can hit when you are completely maxed out in that skill. For DPS purposes, we are going to use this number since it is set, although it will not actually represent what you will deal with the weapon. And through my testing, I have noticed that the third hit in a weapon combo, and oftentimes their middle mouse alternate attack, will deal double the damage that is posted here. Meaning that the dagger will hit for 12 on the first hit, 12 on the second hit, and 24 on the third hit of the combo, along with its alternate attack dealing 24 damage. This is all assuming you're hitting enemies that have a base resistance and are not weak or strong versus your damage type. And the spears do not have a three hit combo, therefore they do not gain a damage bonus on the third hit. Now that we have the damage output of each weapon, we will move on to attack speed and go through exactly how long it takes to land your three hit combo 
And for informational purposes, I will also show the alternate attack speed for each weapon, although we will not be using this in the formula for DPS. You will also see included in this the bow's attack speed and the stag breaker's attack speed, although they will also not be included in the rankings since the stag breaker is primarily an AoE weapon and since the bow is largely dependent on what type of arrows you are currently using. And you can see right here in this slow-mo video that your stamina drains milliseconds before you start the animation for attacking. So we will be starting the timer at this moment to keep consistency across all of the weapons. All right, and now that we have the DPS rankings out of the way, we will move on to attack range. I have set up this little deck walkway thing and marked out distance markers with blueberries, red mushrooms, and yellow mushrooms. Blueberries indicating anything at my 0.3 marker, like 0.3 meters, 1.3 meters, 2.3 meters, and so on. Red will indicate 0.6 being 1.6, 2.6, and so on, and yellows will indicate even meter markers at 1, 2, 3, and 4. Obviously, all of these are approximated, however, they will give us a decent representation of the difference in attack range of each weapon. I took my test man character and set him at the end of the beams and started hitting away with the polearm, and slowly moved him one block closer until we made contact, and then repeated this with each weapon along with their alternate attacks. And I quickly noticed once I swung with the stag breaker that I needed to increase this walkway, although I did not add more mushrooms to it, so you'll just have to take my word on the correct distance for the stag breaker. And the last thing we're going to look at today is knockback distance. We are clearly given a representation of the knockback on each weapon with the knife being represented with 10 and the iron mace represented with 90. But I was more interested in seeing what this actually transferred to in game. So we use the same measuring deck walkway thing that I created and set the test dummy at the very front of it and hit with the knife, the axe, and the mace. And through various tests, I was able to determine that 30 knockback stat equals out to 1 meter, meaning that the knife with 10 would knock back 0.3 meters, the axe ended up knocking back 1.6 meters, and the mace knocked back a whopping 3 meters of distance. After all this testing was done, I took the values of each weapon's ranks throughout the four tests that we did, and came to the conclusion that the mace is the overall highest rated weapon in the game using these stats. 
Now obviously with weapon resistances and weapon skill being a thing in the game, this does not necessarily mean that you should take a maze with you. You can also see in parentheses that I have noted the special characteristic of some of the weapons and what damage type or playstyle it is the best at. The mace being the best blunt weapon you can take in the game, the sword being the best slash, the battle axe being slash as well is still the best two-handed weapon over the polearm if you decide to go that route, the polearm is the best piercing weapon over the spear if you decide you want to carry a piercing weapon with you, the spear has the dual threat of being a ranged weapon as well, the axe obviously lets you carry less on you if you're going out to harvest, and the dagger clearly tops out on backstab, but is the weakest in every other category. Alright guys, that was a ton of testing and data on the hidden weapon stats in the game, giving you that little bit of info that might help you choose which weapon you actually want to carry with you, or which one you deem the best for any given situation. If you're interested in seeing more videos on Valheim, make sure you hit that subscribe button down at the bottom. Thanks for watching, I will see you next time.